Why is it so tempting to sell a winning stock early? I know in my brain that time in the market beats timing the market. However, when I'm staring at a big green candle on the stock chart, it's just so tempting to take those gains and sell early. Meanwhile, I have no problem holding on to a losing stock, hoping for it to go back up in value. Why can't I just do that with the winners? There are many cognitive biases in investing, but there are three in particular that are the most insidious. And I came up with a three-step system that drastically improves my chances of making a sound and logical decision instead of an emotionally compromised decision. Before I talk about how I overcome them, let me first shine a light on these three biases. Warren Buffett is famous for his $1 million open bet to hedge funds, particularly the hedge funds that have high management fees. His bet was that the S&P 500 would outperform these hedge funds over a 10 year period. Only one hedge fund took him up on his offer and sure enough, they lost. If you invested $100,000 in the hedge fund starting in 2008, you would come away with a little over $140,000. Whereas if you vet invested in the S&P 500, you would come away with over $220,000. If we look at the performance, you can see only in year one did the hedge fund outperform the S&P 500. They lost 22% instead of uh, the S&P 500 losing 37%. But then every year after that, all nine years, the S&P 500 won. It's so hard to beat, even for the professionals, because it lets its winners ride and it cuts its losers. There's two components there. So let's start with cutting the losers. The reason it is so hard for me to cut my losers is because of the cognitive bias anchoring. Whenever I purchase a stock, my mind anchors what I believe the fair price to be for that stock at my purchase price. Then even if there's new information that comes out because bad news, stock dropped, and there's something real that has hurt the value of the company, my bias is still anchoring my fair value at that purchase price. In fact, it would even make me tempted to buy more of that stock, which in some cases is just the worst thing that you can do. When you have a bad investment, you need to cut it loose. I like to think to myself, or let's say my stock has dropped and it's now worth $5,000. I imagine that if I never invested in that stock and I was holding $5,000 in my hands right now, would I invest in that company right now with a new $5,000? If the answer is no, then I've got to cut it loose. I've got to sell it. And then there's the added benefit of tax loss harvesting. If I sell a company at a loss and get out of there, at least I can use that capital loss to offset a capital gain and save some of my taxes. The second component of the S&P 500 success is letting its winners ride. And the cognitive bias that makes this so hard is loss aversion. It is so much more painful to lose money than it is to gain money in the stock market. Because of this, if I have a stock that's going up and it's gone up rapidly, it's so tempting to lock in those gains because I'm so afraid of losing the gains, whereas I should also be equally factoring in the possibility of additional gains. When I have an investment that has appreciated in value rapidly, I ask myself two questions to just give myself a little check, like am I having a loss aversion moment or is this company truly risen beyond its fundamentals? The first question is, if it has risen so much, has new information come out that puts this company significantly higher than what I think it's worth. And it has to be significantly higher because if I sell that company, if I sell that stock, I'm gonna take a tax hit right then. Say I'm in the 22% tax bracket. If this stock is not at least 22% higher than what I think my upper threshold is for owning the stock, then I'm, I might as well hold it. If I sell it, I know for a fact I'm losing 22% of those gains. Then the second part is, I gotta ask myself, is there another company that I'm equally excited or more excited about that I can put that money into? Unless there's a much stronger investment, it's very risky to sell the company that's doing well, that has strong momentum. So part one, is this company exceedingly high? And two, is there another company that I'm very excited about? The next cognitive bias is very related to both the loss aversion and the anchoring. And this one it tricks me into selling my winners to buy more of my losers or just open a new position. This cognitive bias is called mental accounting. It's where you see the importance of different money differently depending on the position that it's in. If uh, money is in the loss category or the principal category, you see it as I need to be less risky with this money. Whereas if I have money in the gain category, it's easier for some reason to be more risky with it. The classic example is when you go to the casino. If you start off with a $100 bankroll and you're like, all right, I gotta make this $100 last the night, I wanna have fun. 
And if you have an early win where you, you bump up to $200, it's so easy in your mind to treat the $100 principle differently and guard it more safely than the $100 gain. This is a cognitive bias. Money is fungible. It doesn't matter what category it's in. It has all the same value and should be treated with the same risk profile. So what can I do to stop my own brain from betraying me when I'm investing? I have given this question a lot of thought and I came up with a three-step system that drastically improves my chances of making a sound and logical decision instead of an emotionally compromised decision. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it and I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. The first step of my system happens when I buy a new stock. I make reasonable expectations and a plan for what I'm gonna do in different scenarios. I make a limit sell order and a stop loss order for if the stock rises above my fundamental analysis or falls below my fundamental analysis. Now that's great, but there will be new information that comes out that I will have to react to in the moment. So setting your stop loss and your limit sell is a good start, but it can't be all I do. This is where step two of my system comes in is whenever I have to make a new decision and change my stop loss or my limit sell, I have to be acutely aware of my biases. I have to remember that I can never eliminate them completely because whenever I stop thinking about them, that's when I get bit. So whenever I'm making a new change, I have to read through the biases that I commonly fall victim to, make sure they're just fresh in my head so I can have a better chance of overcoming them. And then the third step is checking with an accountability partner. For me, it's a spouse check. Natalie and I always talk to each other before we make a big buy or sell of a stock. And so if I start by telling her my plan and my expectations, and then in the moment, if I'm getting a little bit emotional, she can remember what my thesis was for that investment and she can kind of recognize if I'm breaking away from that thesis and ask probing questions accordingly. If there's a 50% chance that I'll be emotional and make a mistake, and then there's a 50% chance that she'll be emotional and make a mistake, Combined, there's only a 25% chance that we're both gonna make a mistake. So it really, it cuts our odds in half if we always bounce those ideas off of each other. So having an accountability partner makes a huge difference. Another option that has been incredibly effective for me at eliminating the chance of biases coming into play is investing in ETFs. An ETF or an index fund will handle the share rebalancing automatically. So I don't even have to worry about making a mistake, falling victim to a cognitive bias, selling a winner, and doubling down on a loser. So check out this video right here. If you're curious to see how I evaluate ETFs and how I pick ETFs that tend to outperform the S&P 500, and I'll catch you on the flip side.